welcome to Improvisations on Growth podcast series with Medu Einsiedler, business and life coach. We are wrapping up our mini-series dedicated to the topic of survival with this third episode, looking at real-life companies that have made the leap into a more humane organizational form, placing profits second on the priority list and focusing first on the well-being of customers and of their employees. Did you maybe think that such companies are utopian? While small steps have started to shape up, and as we understand more about the unnecessary need of companies to control and objectify, we can continue taking even bigger steps towards the world of creativity and innovation. So listen and see the role you can play in this shift. Seriously, I do think that we have, well, I know for myself that I have transitioned into the realm of creativity. And what we are doing here for me is not done in survival mode, but but we are going with the flow, we are improvising. So we are in the realm of creativity. And and so I just can deduct since we are doing this together and, and we are both in this realm that you have made this transition as well. And and once you made the transition, we are just lost for for the, the, the structures who just want you to perform in a very narrowly defined way. Even companies who claim that they are creative, like Apple had the claim, and then, of course, Google was for a time very upfront with how, how they designed their, their working space. From Google, I know that they, for a while, have been really inventive. And I read a lot of articles about it to come up with my own image and my own picture and my own evaluation about this. And at the end, I was like, well, yes, no. Because, yeah, they're doing a lot of things to get people in the flow and to kind of tap into people in the people's creativity and giving them a lot of freedom and yet the the overlaying structure was still the the survival I all do this because I want you to achieve x and and, and this kind of sp- totally spoiled the spoiled the picture for me because uh, yeah but but but, but you are now using this idea of flow and you're instrumentalizing this idea of flow and kind of put it back into the really tight structure. So still, at the end of, of the day, it, it, it's the same, it's the same game. You still have an agenda. The end goal is not to, to foster like real creativity beyond any targets and any but let me ask you this speaking of utopian is this really a possibility can we can do humanity even pull this off we do need to eat we do need to have shelter and i'm not i'm not being like um you know like the devil's advocate in any way right now i'm just really thinking as in like being feasible could we pull this off yes we not only could but we can and there are examples out there who are now pulling it off and and i can really? name two what um, country <laughs> i'm gonna move there <laughs> both examples are in a specific industry so it was in the netherlands and it's called bursorg and what they did is The nurses, the caregivers there were not happy at all with the strict structure they had in the Netherlands. And the patients were not happy with that either. And so I don't remember the guy's name, but he came up with a totally new system of self-organizing groups of nurses. So it's a maximum, I think, of 10 or 12 nurses, and they are self-organizing and they're taking care of the patients within a neighborhood. So it's not like patients in, in the hospitals, but people who need care at home. And so 
they're they're taking care of a de defined geographical area, a neighborhood, and they're organizing themselves who takes care of whom, how long, and, and they have come up also with a um, good financial scheme that's good for, for both sides. They're basically earning their own money and then distributing their own money within the group. And if there is more need than the, the 10 or 12 can cover, then they're like founding a new, let's call it chapter or a new group. And then they're taking care of the next neighborhood and the next neighborhood and the next neighborhood. And, and right now, 10,000 nurses that are working in oh, this wow. way in the Netherlands. And we have one pilot here in Austria And uh, and it's already spreading in in Germany and in Switzerland and in uh, Liechtenstein. They are able to work in a way that's good for them. And for me, that is a that is like the transition. They have made the transition from like a strict mechanical system, like the survival system, into okay, how do we want to do this in a humane It's not creativity in the way of art and creativity, no, no, no. but it's, yes. it, 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 it's in the way of a living, breathing. It's a creative system. The system yeah. is not the one we've been used to. Living and breathing, they are able to... And they are part of it. They have a, a saying yeah. in it, as opposed to the traditional one where you, you do not have a saying in it most of the time. You're just stuck in that structure. So I'm curious about something from what you're telling me. There's no president of the organization. There's no CEO. Nope. There's no CFO. There's no. Nope. Nope. So who's doing the accounting? They have a really small headquarter in the sense of who is taking care of like things that, that the nurses cannot take care of themselves. I mean, if the nurses need material, they're ordering themselves. If they're, So, so they're taking care um, about all the things that they can take, take care of. And then there's like a small headquarter. The thing that I found most interesting was the headquarter is, has like 150 people and it has not grown since. Although the number of nurses in group has grown. So, so what does that tell you? I don't know uh, how to interpret that. That... When we think that we need an overhead and a headquarter, we probably need way, 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 way less than we think we need because the people can take care of way more things than we think that they can take care of. Please tell me they also don't have a human resources department. They don't have a human resource department. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> because um, when... I think it's like three or four nurses um, who are starting a group. Please, listener, don't uh, take me up on the numbers, on the exact numbers. Um, so about the size of. And then they are hiring the other nurses themselves. So, so they're putting out the request and then a nurse comes in and she interviews with with all the other nurses because they need to work together. So, so they are making the decision together, which nurse fits in the group. And if they think that they can, can work with her or with him. And so, so they are organizing themselves. They are just really organizing themselves. And for, for me, the equally important aspect is the patients are just really happy because they are not treated as an object anymore. I mean, when you're in the strict survival process structure, then a nurse comes in and has like five minutes to change the, type, the diapers, 10 minutes to help the person to take a shower, seven minutes to, to help the person to dress, 10 minutes to prepare a meal, and then they're out of the door again. So the patient often gets to see like five different people in a day. So, which is then the, the, the human factor and the relationship and the trust 
it cannot happen in the Bursorg system or way, or the creative way, as we call it. This is where humanity, where, where humanness can actually flourish and, and happen because every patient a maximum, sees a maximum of two, two nurses per day or in general, not per day, but in general, because the focus is that I really go and as a nurse and I take care of you and I care about you as a human, you are my patient. And, and we develop trust and we develop a relationship and then I know about your life and what you really like and you are just not an object I need to get dressed and then need to rush out of the door. So what, what I want to emphasize here while listening to you is the priorities because I know we, we keep on talking about change and creativity and maybe even things that seem utopian. But I also want to, at least, at least from my perspective, that yes, I am aware we live in a world where there are still currencies. Money is important. We do need money to buy food. We do need money to pay bills and et cetera. What I want to emphasize is that you can have money and still not make it a priority. And I think this is where the big shift has happened because it's not like, frankly, it would be, it would be amazing if, the, if humanity would evolve to a point where money and currency did not exist, period. But let's face it, it's, we're really far from that. But I see this as a small step in the sense of how the priorities have changed and how it still works. Even if we don't make, as opposed to what you were talking earlier, the traditional corporate that is still driven solely by, by numbers, by profit. I, I, I totally agree. And, and I was just thinking about a quote that I read the other day. And the quote was from an Indian guy. And he said, the, the problem is survival meant so long food. We need food to survive. And now survival means I need a house and a yacht and a big car and I need the Rolex or at least I need the newest, I don't know, Nike sneakers or whatever brand is trending right now. Um, so, so, so we have shifted what we need to survive to, to money. So I, I need a certain amount of money so that I feel I can survive. And that is just absurd. And it's exactly the point that you made. So in, in, instead of, instead of deprioritizing money, we have made it into our God who makes sure that we survive. And yes, we need money and I like money and it, it makes my life comfortable. It's not what defines me as a human being. I think what we have done is we have said, okay, in order to survive as a human being and, and, and my, my, that my self value can survive, I need a certain amount of money. When I keep myself in this loop, I will just always, I will just never enter the other realm of creativity and flow. I think, yes, I agree. And we, we really lost track of the fact that money is a means to something. It's a, it helps you to go somewhere, but it's not the somewhere. It's not the destination. Money can help you travel and go to the Maldives, but money is not Maldives. You still, it's still about the heart and what matters most and spending a good time and maybe being with someone. I think this is where the disconnect has, uh, is happening a lot. And it's exactly what I, how I started the, the question as far as uh, the quote you were saying and the survival. And actually the, 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 the guest that we will have in our next podcast, Karima Kardui, she actually will tell us more about the, the, the second example that I was quoting. 
she, she's working and she came she, she came up with another system that that she in, su supports communities and community learning how she works with people and how she supports them totally is in the realm of creativity and not in survival and it's it's not fluffy and rose red and all harmonious and that's not the point the 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 point is to trust life and that i don't need to to control it like a control machine thank you for listening to the last episode of madu einsiedler's improvisations on growth podcast series this time exploring the topic of survival do you still feel conditioned by the strong instinct of making it through the day fighting an imaginary beast which has ceased to exist many years ago. Perhaps you can see now how it can all be an adrenaline rush that you can be aware of and replace with a different intention, an intention to create, to explore, to connect and innovate. Please share your conclusions with Madhu and email her at madhu.at and get in touch with her on our social media on LinkedIn, Facebook and Instagram. Until next time, Rise above the survival mode, embrace balance, and stay tuned for new podcast series with Madhu Einsiedler.